Welcome to Differential Calculus. I'm your tutor, Ryan, and today's lesson is going to be on basic derivatives. We have a few different topics that we're going to be covering throughout this series, and um, they're listed here as polynomials, exponential functions, trigonometric functions, logarithmic functions, uh, and the different what methods and tricks we can use to uh, find the derivatives of these. This video covers the derivatives of polynomials only. So if you're looking for the other ones, you're going to have to find the uh, corresponding videos. Alright, so polynomials, what are they? In mathematics, a polynomial is a finite length expression constructed from variables and constants by using the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and constant non-negative whole number exponents. Uh, we got some examples uh, that we're going to be doing today, uh, and, and this video only contains example A and C due to the length that it takes. Uh, we're going to avoid doing B because uh, A tells you exactly how to do B basically. So um, try A and then utilize what you've learned in A to try B by yourself. I will not be covering B. Alright, so let's gain some information here. Uh, what is a derivative? A derivative of a function f of x is the measure of how the characteristics of the function in question change with respect to the input. It can be thought of as the rate of which a function is changing at a given point xy or xt or um, xh. Any number of variables can be considered here. An example I hope all of you can relate to would be you change the position of your car constantly from 10 meters to 35 meters in a time t of 5.5 seconds. The derivative would be the rate of change of your location, which is your speed. At a given point in time, you're calculating your instantaneous velocity, or speed. The question may ask, find your instantaneous speed at t equals 3 seconds. So that's just uh, an example of what you would encounter in uh, any calculus course. And that's, um, you know, that's about as hard as it gets for basic derivatives. Okay, so it's time to look at ways of representing a derivative. Uh, there are many ways of representing a derivative, so for simplicity and to abstain from confusion, we'll be only using the ones which are underlined below. That's f prime of x, or, well, it's, that's just, I'm trying to show that the prime there, that little dash, is uh, can blend in with the, uh, the f, so I just want you to be able to see that when I use it. And... Um, if we're to use any others that are located uh, below, I will notify you beforehand, um, verbally, I guess, so that you don't get confused. Okay, we're going to be utilizing what I call the dirty method of finding a derivative, uh, because it's extremely boring, and once you learn the trick, you will hate this method. Uh, f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all that divided by h. Uh, it's extremely important, that equation, so take a mental or physical note of it. And we'll be applying that equation to find the derivative of example a from before, which is f of x equals 4x. So moving on to problem 1. Find f prime of x where f of x is 4x. So as you can see, there's two things we need in order to even solve this problem. We need f of x plus h and f of x. Well, we already have f of x, but we need f of x plus h. So I'm going to give those below. And uh, we're going to then plug them into the equation and follow it through till, till the end. And you'll see what the answer is. All right, so now we have f of x plus h and f of x. Uh, if you have any questions on how I obtained f of x plus h, just uh, follow the note that will appear in a few seconds. And uh, if you still don't get it, just you know leave a comment or PM me or something, and I'll explain it to you. Um, all right, let's move on to solving, or rather plugging in the uh, what we just found into the really important equation above. Okay, so we have our equation written down. Let's start plugging in what we uh, previously found. And we're left. We uh, we obtain the limit as h approaches zero of 4x plus 4h minus f of x over h. Now, if we plug in f of x, we see that the 4x from f of x plus h cancels out with the 4x from f of x, and we're left with the limit as h approaches zero of 4h over h. And we can see that we have an h on top and an h on bottom, so they cancel each other out as well. 
This is going to leave us with the limit as h approaches 0 of just 4, and the limit of a constant is always the, equal to the constant itself. So this signifies that the rate of change of the function f of x equals 4x is equal to 4, which also tells us that the slope of the equation is 4, and that's everywhere. So as a rule of thumb, linear equations of form mx have rates of change equal to m. And that's why uh, you can solve b all by yourself. Okay, let's move on to problem number two. Find f prime of x, where f of x is equal to 8x squared. f of x plus h is equal to 8 times x plus h times x plus h, which ends up coming to 8x squared plus 16xh plus 8h squared. As you already know by now, f of x is already known and given from the uh, initial question. So let's move on to plugging it into our equation. Okay, so substituting in f of x plus h into the equation, we obtain the limit as h approaches 0 of 8x squared plus 16xh plus 8h squared minus f of x, all of it divided by h. All right, so now we're going to plug in our f of x. We notice that on the top, 8x squared minus 8x squared will get rid of itself. And this is going to leave us with the limit as h approaches 0 of 16xh plus 8h squared all divided by h. And we can see we got uh, h's on top and bottom. So those will cancel out. We're going to be left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 16x plus 8h. Since there's two h's uh, applied to the 8 only one of them goes away, leaving us with the limit as h approaches 0 of 16x plus 8h. We now apply the limit, because we can't take it any further. 8 multiplies into 0, and we're left with the final answer of 16x. Therefore, the derivative of 8x squared is 16x. Uh, this concludes the video, part 1 of polynomials. Uh, look forward to part 2.